I was fresh out of high school. I always like to tell everyone I was off my paper route. And uh, I started at NASA when I was uh, 20 in my neighborhood. Uh, when they heard that I worked at NASA, of course, they thought uh, you were an astronaut. So <laughs> I was an astronaut whether I wanted to be or not. It was a very tense time. I was in... Um, part of the Dayton Agreements and I was also a part of uh, what I would call the International Institute of Refrigeration where we did work with uh, people in Russia. And I was very surprised to find out that the Russians had read every report that I had ever written. They knew exactly what I was doing. Okay, now, how they got it, I don't know. Starting with President Kennedy, you know, it, it, I can hear him telling us that he wanted to go to the moon in this decade. I mean, we were very, we were all motivated. And I, what I know is what, what was going on at Glenn. It just seemed like the place was buzzing 24-7. You know, we were running around the clock. We were getting prepared. Our testing is done many, 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 many times, over and over and over and over again. So the igniters have to work, uh, the fuel pumps have to work, everything has to be in concert, everything has to be in sequence, and it's in millisecond type time frames. We had confidence that we could, could do it, but you always say a prayer. Yeah, well, we were all nervous, you know, because you wanted to be successful. It was the first time for every, everything that they were doing at that time was the first time. And I remember when they went behind the moon, you didn't, you didn't know if they would go, you know, because they were telling us they could crash on the backside. And so you, you were real nervous and kind of waiting, trying to see if they were gonna come around. They were on their way, the guidance systems were in place and they were doing well. But the point of going around the moon um, that became a very serious time. And when they did, you know, you relax for a minute, and each thing that they did, you, you, you would still, you know, be right on the edge because there was so much drama with every event. But when they came out of the back side of that moon, they came out into the light, and they saw the earth rise. And I've been thinking, out of the darkness comes the light, and they read Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And God said, Let there be light. It was just a miraculous, miraculous vision. And when they came around and he started reading the Bible, I was a little taken back. And I was like, wow, I don't know how this is gonna go over. After, after he started getting into it though, it seemed like it was really appropriate when you, you saw them kind of going over this gray planet and him reading that, it, it, it seemed appropriate at the time. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. For not just for those two who are trying to explain something that nobody has ever seen before. But in Genesis they did. And that's why I think that's why they read it. It was uh, unbelievable because it was the first time that you got a chance to see something this amazing, you know. 
actually looking at yourself, so to speak. Well, we, we had Vietnam going on, quite, quite a few things. Martin Luther King had been assassinated. You had Kennedy. So uh, it, it was a good thing to pull the world together at that time. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth.